sword that grows ever stronger. The Master Sword. Welcome to Mojo Plays, and today we are bringing you the 10 best weapons in The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. For this list, we'll be looking at the most worthwhile weapons Link can get his hands on while exploring Hyrule. Due to the fuse mechanic, the benefits of each weapon can vary depending on what you add to it, but these are all still incredibly good starting points. Also, the obvious inclusion of the Master Sword does come with light story spoilers, so proceed with caution. What has been your favorite weapon to wield in Tears of the Kingdom? Let us know about it in the comments below. I'll be forever changed. Before we begin, we publish new content all week long, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Gloom Club Link will come across several Phantom Ganons in Tears of the Kingdom, and they always drop good weapons. It's always worth grabbing the Gloom Sword, Spear, or Club as they're some of the strongest pre-fused weapons you can find but it's that last one that's the most powerful. The spear starts with a base attack of 40, the sword starts with 41, but the club starts with 50. It comes with the drawback of inflicting gloom while you use it, but if you fuse it to another weapon, you'll get the extremely powerful benefit without the detriment. Unfortunately, its durability isn't too high. Still, that high base damage is definitely nice. <laughs> Big Goron Sword. The strongest weapon from Ocarina of Time makes a glorious return in Tears of the Kingdom. You can earn one of these bad boys by diving into the depths found at Skull Lake in the Akala region. Link will need to slay some gloom infested skeletal enemies, including a Stalnox. Obviously, it's more than worth it. The Big Goron Sword starts with a base power of 36, which is definitely great but it also has the highest durability of any two-handed weapon in the game. When it does break, you can repurchase it through a Bargainer statue, or, if you have one, just use Young Link's Smash Amiibo. Also, we highly recommend fusing two together. Dragon Weapons Elemental weapons were brought back for Tears of the Kingdom. Being able to electrocute, freeze, or set fire to our enemies never gets old. But if you really want to mess them up, you'll need some dragon parts. Farming these parts can take some effort, considering each dragon's spawn location, root, and hazards. You'll also get a different resource depending on which part you hit. Scales, claws, and fangs are fairly strong fuse materials, but it's the spikes and horns that add elemental damage to a weapon when fused. Horns are the strongest, giving weapons a plus 26 to damage on top of that. Additionally, parts from the new Light Dragon will have weaker attack, but heal Link with every hit no matter which part you're using. Demon King's Bow while this bow should come with an asterisk next to it, there's no denying its potential for dealing major damage. Phantom Ganon will also drop one of these. Although it doesn't inflict gloom on you for using it, its power is based on how many hearts Link has. Using it early in the game won't be that beneficial, especially with regular, stronger bow drops. However, it can reach up to an attack power of 60, making it one of the strongest bows you can find. Of course, Fusing the proper materials onto arrows used with this bow will make it even more destructive. Because you need to be patient, it's also far more durable than Phantom Ganon's other drops. Scimitar of the Seven. Weapons of the Breath of the Wild champions return for the sequel, though some are better than others. Urbosa's scimitar can be unlocked after completing the main story quest in the Gerudo area, as well as rescuing the person who can make it and finding the right materials. Scimitars are all naturally light, allowing you to hit faster than many other one-handed weapons. 
This one is naturally the strongest, with a base attack power of 28. While it was slightly decreased in power from Breath of the Wild, it gained the incredible passive ability Strong Fusion. This enhances the power of any fused material added to the scimitar. If you want to hit fast and hard, this is a must-have. Savage Lionel Bow Just like the first game, the Savage Lionel Bow is absolutely worth adding to your arsenal in Tears of the Kingdom. In fact, any bow that fires multiple arrows is, but this is the cream of the crop. They can be pretty tough to come by since only the strongest Lynels will drop a bow of the Savage variety. But once you have it, you'll be firing three arrows at once, though only consuming one, each with a base attack of 32. The rarer version can actually fire five arrows at once. Plus, just like every other weapon, you can increase its damage output with the Fuse ability. That widespread of damage will make dealing with groups of enemies a breeze. Light Scale Trident Urbosa's Scimitar isn't the only champion weapon with a great upgrade. After completing Zora Domain's story quest and gathering the proper materials, you can earn a copy of Mipha's Light Scale Trident. Zora weapons don't have the highest base attack power, and this one is only a 22. However, the Zora weapons have a pretty broken passive ability called Water Warrior, which doubles a weapon's attack power when wet. Whether you're fighting in the rain, through Sidon's water shield, or are just very clever with your splash fruit, that boosts the light scale trident to 44 before you even fuse anything to it. Also taking its range into consideration, this is one unassumingly mighty weapon. Fierce Deity Sword To earn this powerful blade, you'll first have to find the Fierce Deity Armor. The location of each piece is given through a side quest concerning the famed bandit Misko. You also have a chance to receive it through using the Majora's Mask Young Link Amiibo. But once you have the set, and return to the Cephla Lake Cave in Akala, you'll get the sword. With a base attack power of 38, you can understand why it's worth tracking down. By itself, that power can easily put down all of the basic enemies. It's similar to the other two-handed legacy weapon, the Big Goron Sword, just with slightly lower durability and higher attack power, including its charge attacks. Silver Lionel Weapons As of writing, Tears of the Kingdom doesn't have a master mode like Breath of the Wild, and therefore no gold Lionels. The next best thing is taking on a silver one, which will give you high damage output drops like the Mace Horn and Saber Horn. Using the Mace Horn, you'll get a plus 51 damage to whatever weapon you're fusing it to. Using the Saber, it's plus 55. Needless to say, the Silver Lionel weapons are some of the strongest when it comes to walloping enemies. Of course, you'll still need to consider the strength, durability, and passive features of the item you're fusing these monster parts to but the damage will still likely be impressive no matter what it is. <laughs> Master Sword Yeah, no big surprise here. The Master Sword is a bit harder to get than it was in the first game. It's stuck in the Light Dragon's head and requires two full stamina bars to pull out. It's also the only weapon that doesn't display its damage output. It's likely 30, like the first game, which is high for a single-handed weapon. It also still glows at certain points, like near gloom enemies, which signifies double damage. Additionally, it's the only weapon that doesn't break, instead needing to recharge its energy for 10 minutes after it runs out. Not only does the fuse mechanic increase its power, but also its durability, letting you put off when you need to recharge. Link. You are our final hope. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Mojo Plays, and don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.